together to put on Homeless Awareness Day uh, and we have a packed agenda so we're going to talk about different types of homelessness because obviously as you were taking the first Kahoot quiz you realize there are in fact different levels to this. We have about 11,000 students experiencing some form of homelessness and then we have an organization that was already mentioned that they've been doing this for 30 years. Their focus is to help families that are homeless. And that is the Homeless Trust. Where are the folks from Homeless Trust again? They fight day in and day out for the needs of our homeless families in this community. The same number of homeless we have living on our streets today. In fact, the last census said we have 1,033, a lot of you guys got that question right, on the Kahoot quiz, that were unsheltered. Unsheltered means actually on the street. Um, if you think about this, that means that we could fit all of our unhoused or unsheltered homeless in these seats. So obviously, unsheltered homelessness is just the tip of the iceberg. Again, 90% of the people that are experiencing homelessness today, 90%, uh, in Miami are housed, so they have some sort of shelter. Obviously, Omar, you're here to share. You experienced a season of street homelessness. Homelessness doesn't care whether you're black or whether you're white or young or old or middle class or high class, which it affects everyone. It didn't affect me in a way that you all would think. I'd never been to jail. I'd never been arrested. Um, I went through college. I got my BA in elementary education. I was an elementary school teacher for children with disabilities for about three years of my life. Um, I had a very middle class family, very Christian based. I went to church every day, almost Monday through Sunday, and my life was normal. But my choices, led me down the path of homelessness and addiction. For about two years of my life, I was an addict. I suffered with a disease, addicted to meth. I was shooting it, smoking it, and at a certain point, it just disintegrated my life into absolutely nothing. Um, everything that I had gained, my BA, my house, my car, gone. All of my relationships with my family were absolutely gone. My family at a certain point said that they would not deal with me until I got clean. And I had been through maybe five different programs. Miami Rescue Mission was where I found my home. It's where I found my spiritual base as well. I'm currently working there right now as an intake coordinator. But for me, it was, it was life changing. And uh, my choices, your choices, are so important. Your choices, the choices that you make in life, can can ultimately, you know, change the trajectory of your life in an instant. You may think that just drinking is okay. You may think that just this blunt, this weed, this smoke, this hit might be okay. But it is what they say. It's a gateway drug. Right? You start one at one level and you graduate level after level after level. You don't see how detrimental it is to your life until you're like me, sleeping on park benches, being beaten and shoved around and you know, I was raped at a certain point and it, it, it really messes with your mind. It really does. It makes you feel less than human. And um, I just, I want to say thank you to the Miami Rescue Mission for giving me a new life, a new start, a new beginning. And uh, I would not have been where, I would not be where I am today if it was not for the Miami Rescue Mission. Incredible. My mother was, was a woman to be reckoned with, a force to be reckoned with, okay? She would not let me live the life that I, desires. It was by her will, my sister who is in the back taking pictures. My family was always my base and they were always my driving force, my wind beneath my wings and they wouldn't let me rest in stupidity. 
So um, that's the reason I went to the mission. It was because of them. But they told you that they would not be in your life. Right. I would not. My 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 family gave me a strong, stiff arm. You know, uh, for a small for a small amount of time until I got my life together, and it was well deserved. It yes. was it was what I needed. I needed that break in order to get my mental right, in order to get my thought process right, in order to connect with the spiritual, and also uh, get grounded in something that was serious. But, but the, how long were you chronically on the streets? Two to three years. They, they kept in contact. They tried to soft love. <laughs> right, right. They wouldn't give me any money, which was also a good thing, because <laughs> I, I don't know where I would be if they had. I'm just, I'm grateful to them for being the type of family that they have been for me. The strong will, you know, they didn't give up, they didn't cave in to my stupidity. They actually made me yeah. a lot stronger. Well, I love that you point that out. And again, Omar Herrera, everybody, and he does now work. You heard Omar mention quite a few different places, but the Miami Rescue Mission was one of them. Uh, we have a bunch of different organizations up here. This is our continuum of care. When I said we have a lot of resources in South Florida, we really do. I'm a homeless outreach worker. I'm a homeless liaison specialist with the Miami Beach Police Department's Homeless Resource Unit. A team of four officers and one civilian, me. But this civilian here used to be chronically homeless from the time I was 14 to 28 years old on the streets of South Beach back when there wasn't any help for us. I came from a single mom who experienced a lot of hurt, trauma in her life. I lost a brother and sister I never got to meet. And at a very early age, I did not care whether I lived or died. I look pretty clean today, right? Do I look clean? Do I look a little spiffy? Come on. I used to eat out of a garbage can. Let's hear it, come on. I used to wear the same underwears for months until they got crusty. I used to go months without taking a bath. And I came close to taking my own life and committing suicide Quite a few times, I overdosed, I've been shot, and I've been locked up by the Miami Beach Police Department, same department that gave me the honor and opportunity to serve with their agency. When I was homeless, I was one of those homeless individuals that committed low-level crimes to survive, to eat. Today, I've been a part of rescuing thousands of individuals off the streets of my hometown, the same streets I myself was chronically homeless in. It would not have been possible if it was for the Miami Rescue Mission. Let's give it up for the Miami Rescue Mission one time. It would not have been possible if it wasn't for those angels that gave me the support, that helped in the recovery and transformation of what you see today. I began with the city of Miami Beach's homeless outreach team back when it was created about 2003. But prior to that, I lived in the Miami Rescue Mission since 2001, Memorial Weekend. Memorial Weekend of 2001, when I went in there broken, hopeless. And it was in the Miami Rescue Mission where I was able to turn my life around, go back to school, obtain an education, graduate Miami Dade College Medical as an EMT paramedic. And the same day I graduated Miami Dade Medical, the blessing and honor of a lifetime came to me as one of my hometown's first homeless outreach workers. I accepted that and never looked back. And I would go on many years as a homeless outreach worker with the city of Miami Beach's homeless outreach team. And in 2018, I was brought over to the Miami Beach Police Department and given this first liaison, civilian liaison homeless specialist position in our nation. 
You're looking at a product of hope. You're looking at a product of the Miami Rescue Mission. And it's an honor to be in front of y'all today. Thank you. What do you want these young people to take away and to know about those individuals that you are trying to convince to come off of the streets? Because for some of them, they don't want the help, correct? Yes. Listen, folks are homeless behind a, a hurtful experience in one way, shape, or form. Not everybody today is homeless no longer behind addiction or mental illness. Right now, our cost of living is high. We're dealing with inflation. And there's a lot of people struggling to make it. It was said here, just the, the only thing I want you to get from me this morning, get from us, it's all about providing love, hope, compassion, empathy, and support. It's the main thing I want y'all to know, man. Love, hope, compassion, empathy, and support. Uh, when we talk about folks that are living on the streets, imagine not trusting people who are trying to get you into a safe space. The way you can help is by putting the word out. How are we gonna put the word out? You're gonna help me. Let the students know, just because they're in an unstable housing situation. I was in an unstable housing situation when I was in high school. I didn't know where my next meal was gonna come from. I didn't know if I was gonna graduate, but guess what? I was able to reach out to some people that were able to help me, that's the same thing. So if you students know that you have some um, a classmate that's going through some problems, no, no, Project Upstart's here to help. They're here to help, uh, uh, to give you a, uh, a helping hand and let you guys navigate through that homeless situation. You all, you students are making the voice of what's happening with homelessness in Miami-Dade County and it's specifically Miami-Dade County Public Schools. I did relocate during COVID because life like many of ours could take unexpected turns and I believe many of us here have come to a point in which we wanted as our outcome wasn't always exactly the case. That's what happened with me. I didn't expect my life to take such a heavy turn. Once 2020 came, we all know what happened that year. And unfortunately, my father was another one of the millions of victims. It not only affected us socially, like as a family, but it affected us economically. And it's something that no kid should ever experience, but life is life and it is what happens. But I want to be here today to say that the circumstances do not define or should limit you to what you want. You can always do what you want, no matter what. So I went to my capital advisor and we started talking. I asked her questions on how I could do it. And she suspected of what was going on. And she eventually just came to me and asked me, hey, are you guys okay financially? Like, what's going on? So I was just honest with her and I told her everything that had happened. I, she helped me come to Project Upstart. It's a program that's dedicated to helping students like us so that we could get to college, so that we could advance our studies, so that we could get to where we want to be. They provide a lot of resources like food, clothing. They get you those connections so that you could be able to um, get housing assistance. I mean, uh, I actually live there now thanks to Project Upstart and I got to graduate high school, of course. They gave me, <laughs> thank you. What I'm doing now is running something called the Homeless Youth Helpline. And what you see in front of you is the Homeless Youth Helpline. So I, if it's possible, please take a picture of the screen. Take a picture of the screen because that is the number that you need to know when one of your friends, now or even in the future after you graduate, needs a place to stay. This line is dedicated to 18 to 24 year olds. This is the one of the only helplines, help, homeless helplines, dedicated to young adults in the whole country. Let's hear it from Miami Dade. Let's hear it from Miami Dade. At this point, want to open up the floor to any of you that may have a question uh, for any of our guests. We have Dylan, we have Bo, we have Omar. Again, was there ever like a moment where you just felt like? You, did, you just wanted to give up and didn't want to keep on going and what was like the reason why you kept going? There were many, many, many occasions where 
I wanted to give up. I don't know if anybody know what starvation feels like. Not necessarily a hunger, but starvation. You know, after a few days, you're weak, you're tired, you can't think. And in those moments, you feel a lot of guilt, a lot of grief, a lot of remorse. And it can be a, a flick of the finger and you may want to take your life. I know I experienced a lot of suicidal ideation, a lot of suicidal thoughts. And if I had acted on those thoughts, I wouldn't be here speaking with you today. But what kept me going was obviously my family, but also my expectation. I wanted better for my life. I wanted better for my future. I wanted better for my career. You know, I wanted to get up again. I didn't want to stay down. You said um, that at a certain point in time you got raped. I was just wondering how did that mess you up mentally? How did you get over that bump? Bro, so as a man, you know, it, it doesn't feel good having to uh, talk to people about being abused, especially being a 6'4", at that time, 130, 140 pound man. You know, it, it, it sucks to have to uh, kind of come to terms with that. Because I was doing what I was doing, I was giving everybody an option to my temple, you know, and, and it wasn't something that I liked. It didn't feel good, but it was a life learning lesson that, you know, you will do anything to get the next hit. You will literally sacrifice your body and your soul for just that next hit. And I look at your beautiful faces and I'm just, I don't want that for you. I don't want you to have to experience that, you know, because it's a life crushing moment. It is. And I don't want any one of you, young men, to think that it, it won't happen to you. Because it can. You know, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. You ever heard that before? Yeah. So I want you all to be aware, right, of what can happen to you physically, not only mentally, but physically, when you go down this road, when you make the wrong choice. Kimmy, I have a question. When did you get the wake-up call that you knew it was time to get help? I got the wake-up call when there was a very cold night in February. I don't know how, how many of you remember. It was like a record temperature two years ago in February. It was really, really freezing. And I had lost all of my clothes. I had on a pair of shorts and a tank top and some flip flops. And I passed by this park. I laid down on the bench, which was freezing steel benches. And I'm just, I'm looking up at the sky and I'm like, God, like, what am I doing here? I, I gotta get help. I gotta, I gotta get help. I'm starving. I'm eating donuts out of a garbage can. Donuts. Three boxes of donuts. I'm just shoving them in my mouth, trying to get fed. I never want to feel that type of hunger again. I never want to feel that type of fear, that type of loneliness again. So it was, a, it was an immediate choice for me at that moment. I met a couple that today has became my mom and dad at a local church. And they never stopped coming to visit me, provide me food, clothing. But most importantly, they provided me an opportunity to come to the Miami Rescue Mission. This couple became my only support. I felt that love. And after a year, I accepted their offer. And they drove me over from South Beach to the Miami Rescue Mission. I went in there, I was just sharing this earlier, I was weighing 80 pounds, I was skin and bones, man. And uh, that turned into three years of living in the Miami Rescue Mission and coming out, out of there a new creation. I was wondering what you would tell uh, teens as of right now struggling with homelessness. If you are struggling with homelessness, there is help. There is so much help out there available to you. I know you may feel embarrassed. I know you may feel like the world is ending, but you have, you have hope. You have opportunity. You have resources. 
available to you at your fingertips, your cell phones, your friends, your counselors, your teachers, your community, your churches. So don't feel like there's no one listening. I'm listening, we're all listening. We just need you all to speak up and, and access the resources available to you. How do you get over your suicidal thoughts? How did? Yeah. I didn't have any family. Let, let me get real open with y'all right now before we go. I know it's time to wrap it up. These months right here, we got Thanksgiving coming up. We got Christmas coming up. These was the worst months in the year for me when I was homeless. Why? Because folks, for the most part, was with their families. There was Thanksgiving dinners, Christmas trees, gifts. I didn't have that. Those are the kinds of things that made me want to, want to take my life. Like I said, being out there wearing those same crusty drawers for months until they, yes, eating out the garbage can, sleeping on the sidewalk and it's raining and I'm already wet and dirty that I just stay sleeping there. Those were the kinds of things that made me want to take my life. If you had the opportunity to come face to face with your past self, what would you wish to tell them? Oh, good one, good one. <laughs> I, I would tell that little boy, um, just stay strong, you know? And in the moment of weakness, you might feel like giving up and uh, you may even feel insecure. Uh, you may feel weird or strange or not like the rest, but when you grow up, your test will surely be a testimony. Your mess will turn into a message and you can help a lot of people. You have the ability to help a lot of people, so don't give up, you know, don't fall short. Don't let the, the world tell you that you're not enough because you are enough. You are amazing. You are smart. You is kind. You is important. <laughs> what I would say to my younger self is that any tragedy or challenge that comes your way is just temporal. It's just a chapter of your um, life. It's not the whole book, it's just a chapter and is it a hard chapter? Absolutely. But it's what builds your character, your resilience, your determination that makes you who you are today. Plain and simple, each one of your lives have meaning and purpose. Never give up. Incredible. Last question, I think this one is a really pointy one and it came from somebody in the audience. How do you deal with the judgment of others? Um, so it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because I'm, I'm very sensitive. So a lot of people's judgments were very like hurtful. You know, I didn't trust a lot of people. But what I do now is I, I ignore you. And sometimes, you know, it's okay to be upset, but it's never okay to react in anger. You know, be, be slow to anger, be quick to listen. You know, be quick to take it in, but just ignore it. Well, today I use judgment as added motivation for greater success. Um, but back when I was homeless, that also contributed to me wanting to take my life. Today, like I said, you have support, you have Project Upstart, okay? All right, so again, we always run out of time at the end. Thank you guys so much for your incredible questions and contributions today. I know our South Dade schools got a ways to go, so we would like to get South Dade and South Ridge out of here if we can.